Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I am doing my first ever 1980s G.I. Joe vehicle toy review. And I wanted to start it out with one of my all-time favorites, the 1983 Dragonfly Helicopter with its pilot, Wild Bill. Uh, the Dragonfly Helicopter was designated on the packaging as the Dragonfly XH-1 Assault Helicopter. And of course, it was modeled after the U.S. military's uh, AH-1 Cobra assault helicopter. Uh, and about now, I will cut in a non-copyrighted photo of the AH-1 so you can compare the two. I think the Dragonfly is a pretty good representation of the AH-1 Cobra. Uh, there were a few changes uh, in the translation from a real military helicopter to a... a smaller size toy like this, but still it looks pretty good. Now the Dragonfly was released in 1983 and it was discontinued in 1986 when it was replaced by the new G.I. Joe helicopter, the Tomahawk. Uh, I'll get to the Tomahawk a little bit later. Um, on the packaging of G.I. Joe uh, vehicles and action figures at the time, uh, they had flag points that you could cut out of the packaging and send in for special mail-away offers. Uh, for example, uh, I don't have the Dragonfly box, but this uh, Fang helicopter box still has the flag points, and as you can see, that's a two flag point value. The Dragonfly here was worth four flag points twice as many flag points as the Fang helicopter. It was a more expensive toy and it came with an action figure. So uh, really the, the bigger and uh, more expensive the toy was, usually the more flag points you got from it. Now let's take a look at the different parts of the Dragonfly. Of course we have the gun turret. Uh, this is uh, this chin turret, of course, is very prominent, and it's uh, pretty cool looking. There were two versions of this turret. Um, I have the later version. There was an earlier version that not only swiveled from side to side like this, but also would uh, elevate. This later version, they just made it one solid piece of plastic instead of having the internal part that would elevate the guns. It turns about this far, as you can see. It doesn't turn all the way around. And on the chin turret, it has what the blue prints call um, a grenade launcher, this thing, which actually looks more like maybe a, a radar array or a, a, some kind of a, maybe infrared sensor, something like that, more than a grenade launcher and a 25 millimeter Vulcan Gatling gun. And I can tell you that was one of my favorite features uh, on this vehicle when I was a kid. On the side here, molded on, there is uh, what the blueprints call an X551 60 millimeter mini cannon. And as if it didn't have quite enough guns on it, it has this side gun here, which the blueprints call a laser guided 166 millimeter cannon pod. This cannon pod came in two parts and it's often missing on these dragonflies because if you don't have this hose piece that connects to the side here, pull that out so you can see what I mean without breaking it, there we go. If this is missing, the gun doesn't actually fit and stay on the side. It needs the hose, really, for that second piece of support. There is a, a hole and peg here, but that's this peg is easily going to break off or it'll just fall off. So it's one of those things where you really need both of the parts to secure the side cannon onto the helicopter. It has removable engine covers, if I can remove it without breaking it here. And you can see the engine detail. Some nice engine detail, same thing on the other side. Now on the back here it has 
an engine exhaust, which of course when we were kids, these were jet engines, so we would pretend that the helicopter was jet powered and uh, would fly super fast through the air. It has an opening canopy. And of course the pilot, Wild Bill, who I'll talk about a little bit later. Let's set Wild Bill aside for the moment. The cockpit has some detail. It has some stickers there for instrument panels. Um, but other than that, the seats are pretty plain. There are no back pegs on the seats. Um, the figures pretty much just sit in there. Um, and they sit pretty deeply, so they're pretty secure in there. They don't need uh, back pegs or foot pegs in the bottom to hold them in place. But other than the, uh, the sticker control panels, it's a pretty plain cockpit. Let's take a look at the missiles. The blueprints on this, I want to be careful with this because they do, they go, do go in very firmly and I don't want to break the uh, stabilizer here. This one, the blueprints call a Sidewinder HE missile. HE, I believe, standing for high explosive. And this one, the blueprints called a Sidewinder air to ground missile. And there are the same missiles on the other side. One of the nice play features on this helicopter was the rescue winch and hook, which uh, on the bottom had this little um, little wheel here that you could turn, and would it would roll the the rope and winch hook out, uh, and then you turn, of course, the other way to reel it back in. That was a very nice feature on this vehicle. On the rear here, a feature that I don't think was on the actual AH-1 Cobra helicopter is uh, this mysterious thing here, which the blueprints call a counter-rotating turbine, which I guess is supposed to eliminate the need to have a rear uh, or a tail uh, rotor to stabilize the helicopter. Instead, of in the place of a tail rotor, it has kind of this second sort of diagonal stabilizer. These skids, as you can see, have foot pegs, which you can use to place figures using the holes in their feet that would fit into foot pegs. But really, I think the foot pegs on this are a little bit thick. You can squeeze a figure on there, but they don't fit well. And I would be concerned about cracking the heels on these figures, trying to force them into these foot pegs. So um, I would just leave those for show even though it has a sticker there that says it's a it's a step. I would just not step. Do not step on that. Um, instead, uh, just have your figures right on the inside where it's nice and safe. Let's take a look at the blades. Unfortunately, these helicopter blades, like most of the helicopters of the G.I. Joe toy line are susceptible to drooping and these are not nearly as bad as many that I've seen. They're drooping a little bit but um, they can kind of be straightened out here. Um, if you're going to store this and not have it out on display then it might be a good idea to um, use, secure these with something straight, something flat that will kind of keep them out and kind of prevent some of the, the drooping a little bit. At the end of the blades we had these sort of safety cap things. They're rubbery and uh, those are also often missing. 
Uh, I guess that was a safety feature for the kids because uh, these blades could whack a kid in the eye. A nice little uh, detail on the end here looks like um, looks like they might be like running lights or something like that on the end of these. So that's kind of nice. But the main play feature that everybody loved was the automatic rotating helicopter blades which were activated by this trigger here on the side which you would push forward and it would cause the blades to spin. Let's get a nice view at that. And uh, you could get them going pretty fast if you uh, timed the trigger right and caught it hold really good. And uh, those blades could really move. However, I do have to caution you. The most natural way to hold this uh, and activate the trigger is to hold the tail like a, a handle and push it forward like this. However, I've noticed that holding it that way, your hand naturally tends to put pressure on this stabilizer here. And mine, as you can see, is showing some white plastic strain. And I'm concerned about this eventually breaking if I put too much pressure on it. So I, I don't hold it like that anymore. Um, I, I usually always hold it from underneath. Another consequence of holding it like that is that it rubs the uh, stickers off um, on both sides, in fact. Uh, there's some wear on the stickers uh, because it has been held, I think, the most natural way. So if you have a dragonfly, first of all, if, or if you're looking for uh, a dragonfly to purchase, take a look at this stabilizer and see if it has some stress. And if you can find one that doesn't, um, by all means, don't add stress to it. If you want to activate the blades, just try to try to hold it down here like this. It's uh, it's going to be much easier on the plastic and avoid breaking uh, this nice collectible toy. Now I mentioned that the blades were susceptible to drooping, and I also mentioned that the dragonfly was replaced by the 1986 Tomahawk helicopter. So let's look at the Tomahawk. Just very briefly, this is a review of the Dragonfly, not the Tomahawk, so we'll, we'll just give uh, the Tomahawk a quick glance. Uh, as you can see, the Tomahawk is a much bigger helicopter, and it's got the two top rotator blades instead of the single-bladed Dragonfly. It's got kind of an open cargo bay here, uh, and it kind of continued the trend of uh, Hasbro replacing older vehicles with bigger, newer vehicles. That wasn't always the case. For instance, they replaced the 1983 Sky Striker with the Conquest jet, which was in fact smaller. But in this case, we've got a really much bigger helicopter replacing the Dragonfly. And it's got, it still has a nice military style look to it, so it's still pretty cool. But the feature that I wanted to point out was the blade drooping. Now I have the blades, I've taken them out and I've flipped them over to ho hopefully let gravity pull them back down. But the tomahawk blades are even more susceptible to drooping than the Dragonfly helicopter was. I mean, these are longer and even thinner plastic than the Dragonfly. And I mean, just imagine these flipped over as they were when I got it. They were very droopy. And this, this one in particular was at a, drooped at a pretty extreme angle. So that's something to think about when you are looking for a Tomahawk helicopter. Check out those uh, helicopter blades. If you get one with droopy blades, you will probably have to end up doing some work on them to uh, make it look a little bit better. Now I want to, before we move on to look at the action figure, I do want to make one note about the sticker uh, on the side of the dragonfly. 
This says Master Sergeant W.C. Culbert. Now, you, you may wonder who this person is. It, it isn't Wild Bill. That's not his file name. Uh, nor is it the name of any member of the G.I. Joe team. This name is actually the name of the sculptor who worked for Hasbro who sculpted the Dragonfly. Uh, his name was Bill Culbertson. And um, I guess in his honor, he got his name on the Dragonfly itself. Now, let's look at the figure that came with the Dragonfly, Wild Bill. Wild Bill had the typical articulation of 1983 G.I. Joe action figures. He had the swivel arm, which meant that his arm would swivel at the bicep. He had uh, articulation here at the elbow. Unfortunately, I have a crack on this elbow. But fortunately, Wild Bill is a pretty easy figure to find. And so if you have problems with your Wild Bill, chances are you will be able to find a replacement without too much trouble. Wild Bill is made out of this light green plastic, which unfortunately for Hasbro, uh, historically uh, has been susceptible to cracking. It's, it's uh, fairly fragile, but I think that they must have changed the plastic somewhat by the time they got to uh, Wild, Wild Bill in 1983 because I don't see nearly as many broken Wild Bills as I do of Zap and Steeler and Stalker, who were also made out of light green plastic. Uh, the light green plastic is subject to discoloration, as you can see here in the elbows. We've got some uh, sort of yellowing. Uh, it looks more, slightly more brown than the rest of the arm. Additional articulation, as with the 1982, 83, and 84 G.I. Joe figures, he could turn his head from side to side. Um, later issues of G.I. Joe action figures had a ball joint rather than just a swivel so they could look up and down, but not Wild Bill, he can only look left and right. These figures had an O-ring construction, which means that there's a rubber band inside that holds the whole figure together and allows him to bend here at the torso, allows his waist to bend a little bit, not a great deal. He's got a waist piece that allows his legs to move uh, about, about 90 degrees. He's got articulation here at the knee, and that's about it as far as the articulation goes. Now let's look at the sculpt of this figure. The most prominent part of the figure that, of course, everybody's going to notice first is the hat. It's kind of uh, looks like a Union cavalry hat from the Civil War. Uh, it's got a really nice kind of rope around the top here and it looks like a cowboy hat and of course Wild Bill is supposed to uh, evoke the cowboy motif. In addition he has a vest, a brown vest and a knife sculpted in here. He has dog tags sculpted on his open collar and bare chest. I don't know if you can see that, try to get that on camera. Unfortunately, the dog tags are not painted. They're not silver, as you might expect, but they're just kind of molded on there and the, painted the same color as his skin. He's got some nice sunglasses, uh, which are silver metallic paint. And, and uh, as you may know, Anytime you see the silver metallic cover colors on G.I. Joe action figures, that tends to wear off very easily. So if you're looking for a Wild Bill action figure, take a look at his sunglasses and see if 
uh, the silver paint has worn off very much on those. He's got a, a pretty nice mustache, a nice Magnum PI mustache. Kind of uh, reddish hair. Another very prominent feature and continuing with the cowboy motif is uh, his uh, six guns, his uh, six shooters that are molded on to his holsters so he could cross draw. Of course, you can't articulate the character quite well enough to cross draw. I guess he could reach around here. But nice, ni I, 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 that's a really nice feature. It's pretty neat. Some white handles. And he's got pockets here on his legs and um, and some boots that don't look like your typical um, military issue boots. Uh, I think they're also supposed to evoke the uh, cowboy boot style. Uh, and let's not forget the kind of uh, bull's head belt buckle. Which again says uh, that this guy is a cowboy. Let's take a look at Wild Bill's file card. This file card was on the back of the box for the Dragonfly, and you were encouraged to cut that out. There's nothing on the backing, just plain cardboard. Because it was the uh, back of a box. It says his, uh, of course, the helicopter pilot, and his code name is Wild Bill. His file name is William S. Hardy. So his name is Bill. It's got his serial number. Uh, his primary military specialty is helicopter pilot. No surprise there. Secondary military specialty, fixed wing pilot, uh, aircraft armorer. So I guess uh, as a fixed wing pilot, he could fly a, an airplane. His birthplace is Brady, Texas, which um, of course continues with the idea that this is a, a cowboy. And up in this top section here, it says Hardy served as combat infantryman and participated in LRRP, Long Range Reconnaissance Patrol operations, during Southeast Asian debacle. In other words, Vietnam. Reenlisted for Flight Warrant Officer School and has since remained in the service. Specialized training, classified. Apparently, he's got some secret training that we can't know about. Qualified expert, uh, M1191A, auto pistol, uh, prefers single action 45 Colt revolvers, which they've given him here, and XM16 attack rifle. Down here it says, amiable and slow talking, fancies himself a country western singer, Totally honest in personal dealings, but not beyond spinning a tall tale for the amusement of comrades. So that's Wild Bill and his file card. Some nice card art here. I think that looks really good. And we can't finish a review of the Dragonfly helicopter without talking about Airborne. Airborne, of course, did not come with the Dragonfly helicopter. And there was nothing um, about his character or file card that really necessarily specified him as a companion to the Dragonfly helicopter. Uh, however, uh, he really does fit well with the Dragonfly, and his file card indicates that his secondary military specialty is helicopter gunship gunner. I think the best way to display the Dragonfly helicopter with its full complement of crew is to have airborne as the gunner. He'll, uh, his feet will actually go down into the well that's created by the uh, chin gun here and you have to kind of push him down a little bit and sometimes this this chin gun will pop off but uh, get him in there and then have Wild Bill in the pilot seat which is actually the rear seat of this helicopter. Let's see, get in there, Wild Bill. And there you go.
pilot and gunner all ready to go. Well, that's my review of the 1983 Dragonfly helicopter. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're looking for a Dragonfly to add to your collection, I hope that this was helpful. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching, and look for more videos in the near future.